Hey guys and welcome back to our channel. So in today's video, I wanted to share with you how I customized Eva's little IKEA play kitchen. This hack was super easy to do, so if you'd like to know more, just keep watching. So the first thing that I did was remove all of the wood pieces from the packaging and I laid them out on a flat surface. I didn't want to bother trying to figure out which pieces would be showing or not. I just ended up painting anything that was wood. So after I laid out all of the wood pieces, I painted them by using this spray paint. This is the Rust-Oleum Painter's Touch Ultra Cover Paint and Primer in semi-gloss white. This spray paint was truly amazing. I didn't have to sand any of the pieces beforehand and the paint dried to the wood beautifully and covered really well. I would highly recommend using this spray paint if you plan on doing this DIY project. So as you can see, I sprayed a nice layer on each piece and once it was dry, I just flipped the pieces over and repeated this process on the other sides as well. So while those pieces were drying, it was time to work on the countertop. I ended up using this marble contact paper that I found on Amazon. I will link this and any other products that I used down in the description box for you. I measured the length of the countertop and cut the paper, making sure that I had enough excess to fold under. Then you just peel off the backing of the contact paper and stick it to the countertop, making sure to take the time to smooth out any bubbles as you go along. Next, you want to flip the countertop over and you'll want to use a sharp X-Acto knife. This one that I was using was not the best, as you can tell, but you'll want to cut around these openings, making sure to leave a couple inches around the edging so that you can fold this over easily and stick it um, to the wood. You honestly don't have to worry about this part being perfect because this part won't even be visible once your sink and your cooktop are in. Okay, so you don't have to do this extra step if you don't want to, but I ended up securing the contact paper with some tape to ensure that nothing would start peeling off and everything was nice and secure. To paint the hardware and faucet on the kitchen, I ended up using some wood skewers. I placed them into the holes and then stuck them into the cardboard box. This made it easy to paint them from different angles and they were nice and secure. I painted them using this Rust-Oleum metallic paint and primer in the color Champagne Mist. It says right on the bottle that it's great for plastic and it worked perfectly. I loved this color because it, I was wanting more of a bronzy kind of finish 
and not so much a shiny gold. So I'm really happy with how this color turned out. I painted the hooks, the rod, and the leg covers for the kitchen in this champagne mist color as well. I went ahead and spray painted the sink white because I just really loved that lighter look of the sink versus the bronze. I also went ahead and taped off the cooktop so I could spray paint the edging white as well. So now moving on to the backsplash, you'll need a piece of foam board. I picked mine up at Dollarama for just a couple of dollars. You'll also need some white subway tile stickers or any backsplash of your choice. I'll link these exact ones in the description box that I purchased on Amazon. Then you just start piecing them together on the foam board by removing the backing and sticking them to the board, overlapping them as you go along. This part took me a little bit of extra time because it can be tricky to get them all lined up perfectly, but it's totally worth the extra effort in the end because this backsplash really is the star of the whole kitchen. So once I finished laying the pieces across, I was left with two extra sheets. I ended up cutting them three ways and then continued to place the tiles along making sure everything was nice and even. Once all of my stickers were placed, I went along the edges with my scissors and trimmed off any excess pieces. And this is what the backsplash should look like once it's all finished. Once the paint on the cooktop was dry, I went ahead and removed all of the tape and this is what the end result looks like. So now it's time for the fun part, putting the kitchen together. So even though the instructions say not to, my hubby always uses a drill to put together IKEA furniture. It made the process so much faster and I have to give a big shout out to him for his hard work and patience putting this part together for me.
So after everything was assembled, it was time to install the backsplash. So for this, we centered it onto the back of the kitchen and then cut off any excess pieces showing on the sides with a new sharp X-Acto knife. We then nailed the foam board into the wood frame of the kitchen until it was nice and secure. And then we placed the plastic covers on the bottom of the kitchen legs. And that's it. The plate kitchen is all done. You can style this however you'd like. I added some of these battery operated push lights and this cute little letter board from the dollar store for a little something extra. This was such a fun DIY project and I absolutely love how it turned out. So that's it for this DIY IKEA kitchen hack video. I hope that you enjoyed it and if you like projects like these, make sure to give this video a thumbs up so we know to make more of these videos in the future. Thanks so much for watching and we'll see you in our next video. Bye guys! Thank you.